This brand new story starts, and the first thing we learn is that the strongest divine trench system has been activated. Another notification pops up, mentioning that today's random reward has arrived, and the system promptly congratulates the host for getting 1 million yen. We also see some currency bills raining down behind the notification window, and the next notification mentions that the current balance is now 9 trillion, 755 billion. It seems another notification awaits us, and this time it tells us all about the tasks. The first task was to spend the money for the first time, which is marked as uncompleted for some reason. The task details mention that the host has to stack up spending of over 100,000 yuan, and when it comes to task rewards, there will be a cashback card and 9 nether soul cleansing wine. It seems our MC of this story has finally appeared in the scene, who seems to be quite restless at first glance, and his eyes are seemingly demanding more sleep. Either way, he gets out of his cozy bed, slips on his slippers, and starts walking with the same dizzy head of his. We also see there is a system notification hovering over his forehead, telling about his whooping 12-digit balance ready to be spent. This boy's name is Lin Yu, and it has been three years since he was revived. And after his revival, he got bestowed with a system. Just as he's about to scrub the sleepiness off his face, we catch him muttering to himself about how coming back to life with some extra perks sounds like a pretty sweet deal for leveling up in this crazy world. However, he can only tap into those 9 trillion Ming Yuan after he kicks the bucket. And you better believe he's not too keen on that whole dying thing. Out of the blue, he begins to hallucinate blood dripping right before his eyes. All of the dizziness he had just vanishes from his eyes at this unexpected sight. When we take a closer look, it seems the blood is real, and it has already painted the dressing mirror of the toilet like a horror movie, leaving the boy shocked out of his mind. It seems the shocks just do not end there, the blood begins to consolidate, forming a crimson-colored message on the mirror's surface. It congratulates our boy for qualifying for the fifth beta test of the thriller game. A countdown before the beta testing begins reveals there are 16 hours remaining before the game could start. Lin Yu's mind is officially blown. He's staring at this crimson message, trying to process what's going on. He curiously raises his finger to touch the message on the mirror, because he realizes that this prompt is not from his divine system, as his system automatically appears in his consciousness, and even if he don't see his system messages before his eyes, he would still know what it is trying to say. But in this case, the words of this message about this thriller game are seemingly real. Just as his finger makes a contact on the window's surface, he could practically feel this crimson fluid sticking and reacting to his touch. He is totally blown out of his mind once again, and the feeling he just had by touching this message feels morbidly familiar. He feels as if there is a surge of energy in this blood that is calling to him. This energy feels gruesomely abnormal, tinged with the scent of blood and the familiar smell of death. He grits his teeth at this point, determined to uncover more. He decides that to better understand his predicament, he has to enter this thriller game. He also notes that the red words specifically mention that he is a part of the fifth trial of beta testing, which clearly indicates this test has been ongoing for quite a while now. He takes another look at the mirror, and soon it clicks in his mind that the internet's gotta have some juicy deets about this game. Before he jumps in feet first, it is probably a good idea to figure out what the heck he is getting himself into. So, he wastes no time in firing up his computer and diving into the world of the internet. With a quick search, he finds a treasure trove of information about the game but it seems that it is not exactly sunshine and rainbows. Every bit of information he finds paints a pretty grim picture. It's all about people vanishing into thin air. Rich people, murderers with big names, they're all vanishing. All of the fingers are raised against this thriller game behind their disappearance. And it seems like this thriller game system is only picking out people with some rare qualities. Although we do not know yet what criteria they have, let us hope to find out soon. It seems the boy has finally discovered something worthwhile. As we take a look at the monitor window ourselves, we are hit by another thriller game notification that popped out of nowhere. The message clearly mentions that if our boy has found this scarlet painted invitation, then he can rest assured that this thriller game definitely exists. As he dives deeper into this message, with his confused and scared look in his eyes, he learns that mysterious events are happening everywhere, caused by the return of the players of the thriller game. And the reason for the recent establishment of the number 9 investigation center by officials is none other than to deal with the thriller game. Those chosen will enter and attempt to survive a dungeon full of spirits. If anyone violates the rules of the dungeon, they will be killed by these spirits discriminately. In every dungeon, at least half will face their death no matter what. However, those who survive will have the opportunity to control spirits and obtain items in the game. Lastly, the system warns that whether he dies or survives, it totally depends on his own abilities. And with those final words, the message ends. After soaking up all that shady info, there is this sly grin dancing on our boy's lips, like he is totally down for jumping into the mix. He is entertaining the wild idea that if there are ghosts in the gaming world, maybe they spill over into reality too. Perhaps by scoring big in the game, he will nab the skills to handle those spirits. So even if the spirits appear in the real world, he will be able to handle them, which he finds pretty darn intriguing. 
he is confident he will win because his divine system will boost his survival chances even higher. There is also a possibility that this so-called underworld currency system may have appeared only due to this ominous game. With an almost ominous smile and a devilish glint in his eyes, he knows that this opportunity is too good to be tossed aside, because he just cannot count too much on the outside world to progress and survive in his life. So, he gotta make sure of that himself. The clock is ticking, and it seems there are only 5 minutes left before the beta testing of the game begins. The boy has also prepared himself for the game as much as he can in this short period of time, and he is constantly looking at his watch, eagerly awaiting for the time to strike the needle's perfect pose he desires. The time finally arrives, and as soon as one needle gets on top of another, an arcane red energy starts to shimmer around him. The ground beneath his feet starts to shatter like a fragile piece of glass. He starts to fall down into this seemingly digital-looking world, and the system notification promptly welcomes him for entering into the thrilling game, marking a whole new chapter in his wild journey called life. Just as the boy is falling down, the system reveals the name of the place he is about to be summoned to, which is the Huang Quan Hotel. His first mission is to work hard and survive for two days. Moreover, he will also find five more players taking part in this game other than himself. And just then, the boy finally lands on the solid ground right on his feet. He immediately tilts his head straight, and the first thing that comes into his view is this rundown hotel before him. The surroundings are giving off vibes as if he has just landed smack dab into the zombie apocalypse. Right on time, the other five participants also arrive on the scene. The prime time Pete looks at his surroundings with a mix of shock and astonishment, while the blondie just lets out a sigh and shrugs off his surroundings as if taking a Sunday stroll in these kinds of dungeons is part of his daily routine. On the other hand, the bearded behemoth just stands there expressionless, while the women behind him give off vibes of the lady that say, ara ara after every sentence they speak. There is also a timid and young girl in the mix, and I'm not gonna lie she seems to be the most normal person among these goofballs. The girl is taking confused glances at her surroundings like a normal person would, with visible worry on her face. Just as the boy is taking a look at these individuals, we hear the blondie with his casual, arrogant tone asking if this is actually the thriller game, while the purple head comments on how the atmosphere looks so gloomy, making her wonder if she is actually going to survive in this place. Big Beardy McBeardface finally speaks up, mentioning that everyone here seems to be newbies, other than him of course. Purplehead, taking note of the bulky guy's choice of words, immediately asks if this is not his first time coming here. The Hairy Hulk immediately agrees, stating that he was also part of the fourth batch of players. He further mentions that he always had gone through versions like these every half a month, and it is already his fifth time being here. Of course, both of the females perk up with happiness to recognize him as a veteran. But it seems the same can't be said for our boy, and he is definitely smelling something fishy about this guy. But then, the big guy drops some serious truth bombs on the excited crew, reminding them not to take this game too lightly. He starts laying out his past experiences in these dungeons, where 9 out of 10 folks always end up kicking the bucket, and the survival rate for newbies is even lower. He gestures towards his worn and torn hand, which is a grim reminder of the harsh reality of this place. The once cheerful faces of those ladies turn into pure horror in a split second, both of them letting out a horrified gasp. But our boy is just listening silently. But that is when he takes a step forward, adopting a casual tone and a nonchalant face. He mentions an undeniable fact. The big guy's ability to survive in this place is impressive in itself. So in light of that, he asks the big bro if he has any experiences he can share with the newbies. The man's mind immediately goes on high alert. He realizes that this young gun is actually sharper than the others, which forces him to believe that perhaps this one will be able to survive this version of the dungeon. In any case, he decides to speak up, mentioning that the thriller game's spirit does not kill others for no reason, and as a survivor he advises them to never forget these two points he is about to lay down. The first one is that the thriller game ghosts will only kill those who break the rules, and secondly, the fundamental rules will be made clear to players up front. The boy is perceptive, and it does not take him any longer to realize that this guy is speaking the truth. However, he just cannot shake the feeling that there is more to it than what meets the eye. Sure, these rules are important, but in the cutthroat game of survival, others might get used or even sacrificed when push comes to shove. It is a harsh reality he will need to be ready for. Suddenly, the hotel's door starts to creak open. Tension stacks up among the crew, and everyone's eyes are locked only in one direction. And forth comes an old coot, clearing his throat while sauntering toward the participants. As we take a closer look, it seems that this ominous old baldy was already anticipating the crowd to gather, and wholeheartedly extends an invitation for the crew to work in Huang Quan Inn. It is pretty much clear that we are bound to stumble upon nut jobs like these, given the creepy dungeon they are in. The old coot clears his throat once again. While in his crooked posture, he welcomes the crew and does not forget to introduce himself as Huang Quan Inn's accountant. He explains that he is here on Boss Lady Feng's instructions to assign everyone roles here. This is the first time we have seen the boy feeling somewhat terrified ever since we came to this place. He just cannot shake off this menacing icy cold aura that this fellow is exuding. Of course, the ones standing behind our boy are also thoroughly creeped out to see this old baldy there. 
back to the old timer. He elaborates further that before they start working there, everyone must know about the rules, and he is quite eager to enlighten the crew about them. Of course, Lin Yu was already anticipating this to happen. After all, the big guy had already told everyone that they would be enlightened about the roles up front. So he is also eager to hear it, and will make sure to never violate these death rules of thriller games that are about to come his way. The old man pipes up once more. He starts off by emphasizing that whether you are assigned to the counter or the kitchen, everyone better give it their all. But if anyone is found slacking, the boss lady of the hotel will make sure not to let anyone off the hook lightly. The old coot says this with a heavy tone to ensure everyone understands the severity of their situation. After hearing this, it does not take long for the boy to notice that this accountant guy is scared stiff of his boss lady thing. Needless to say, which only means that the boss of his is an even stronger spirit than the accountant. And it is quite clear that just because he is her servant, it does not mean she will be going easy on him. The old man lays out another rule, by mentioning that the items in the store are not in their best condition, so it is easy to break them. If any of them knock or break them, they must pay according to the original price. Lastly, he tells the already dejected crew not to disobey the guests, although the lady boss would not blame them for unreasonable guests, since many of the guests they have are bad-tempered. However, if the guests found a reason to reprimand anyone from the crew, the lady boss will not protect anyone. With everything laid out plain and simple, the old baldy eagerly asks if anyone's got questions. It is clear that the crew is not clearly jumping in joy to hear these rules, but they do not have any questions either. After all, not that they have any room to make any demands, so everyone remains silent. The geezer takes their silence in a positive manner and proceeds to assign the crew to their respective roles. He starts assigning roles by picking the grizzly giant first from the bunch. The baldy takes hold of the big guy's broad shoulders and sturdy waist and promptly calls him a strong one. After taking it into account, he commands him to go to the back of the kitchen where he will be helping the cook in cutting the vegetables. He also gives him precise directions, telling him to simply enter straight ahead and then turn left, and his big feet will find the kitchen. Sir Fuzzy Face starts striding out of the place with a worn-out expression. He looks more dejected than someone who is supposed to be smashing bitches, but has now been assigned to babysit little kids. And meanwhile, our guy is probably thanking God that he is not in the big guy's shoes. That is when the main mountain turns around, takes a little glance over his left shoulder and shoots a look at our boy, while telling him to take care, but he only says this in his mind. I am not sure why he is saying it like that, but I guess we will find out soon enough. As soon as the bearded behemoth is making his way inside the hotel, the old man starts to clear his throat once again out of habit. With his crooked finger, he points his finger to his right, telling the blondie and the purple one that they will be in charge of cleaning the living room. He also does not forget to give them precise directions as well, instructing them to turn right and head over to find Lady Zhang to snag the necessary tools. After he is done with both of them, he turns around, toward this midlife maverick with glasses, mentioning how this guy looks educated by the looks, so he takes it into consideration before telling him to go upstairs to the second level, and enter the room with the sign that says accounting room. This old McBaldy also mentions that he will make sure to teach this guy his job activity there personally. After the guy with glasses leaves the place, it is only our boy and the most sane-looking girl out of the bunch. Lai Yu, who is our boy of course, stands there eagerly waiting to hear what kind of role he will be assigned to. The baldy turns around and entertains the idea that these two are just like dolls, tender-looking, and their appearances are not bad either. An almost mischievous smirk etches right below the old man's mustache when he orders the both of them to go to the hall and be waiters. He also assumes that both of them do not need to be taught about how to serve orders. Since neither the boy nor the girl seems to have any problem, the old man extends his hand and simply tells them to walk straight and they will see the hall. He expresses his hope for both of them that they will be mindful enough while at work and would not make any mistakes. But the girl before her is utterly terrified, petrified in her boots to move even an inch. That is when Lai Yu grabs her hand and starts walking down the hotel while dragging the girl along with him. The boy takes his first step inside the hotel and confidently barges in the place, while the lady behind him is taking worried glances at her surroundings. While they are walking inside, the lady musters up some courage to thank our boy for not letting her mind scatter while they were out. But just as the girl is about to reveal her full name, the boy interrupts her before she can say a second word after she says lie. He responds immediately, letting her know that he will just call her Zio Lai, and she can call him Brother Lin. When we take a look inside his head, we learn that this cunning guy pointed out that the big guy who was assigned to cut vegetables never revealed his name, so following his footsteps, he decides it is better if he does not say his full name either. The lady looks a bit puzzled at first, wondering why he is calling her Zio Lai, but she decides not to question it and just goes with the flow, thanking him for the heads up. Just as the boy opens the door of the hall, the creak voice reverberates faintly, and this red light starts to leak out of the open door. They enter the hall, only to find that it is absolutely empty, not a single soul. Zio Lai turns around with a confused look, asking what they are supposed to do next. The boy just tells her they are going to do exactly what they are told, and will wait there to greet the customers. But this is the only thing he told her. 
deep inside. He knows that there is more to it than just greeting lovely guests, and every step they are about to take from now on is a matter of life or death. Right then, whatever unfolds before them takes the both with a great shock. As the scene transitions, we see these gigantic feet leaving a thudding noise with each step they take. And the next scene greets us with this giant troll, who seems to be grinning ear to ear at the sight of our boy. His eyes are shimmering with evil intentions, and his drooling mouth perfectly complements his nature, a beast that is hungry for human meat. And he does not shy away while expressing his surprise, by asking if this place actually contains humans. The boy is totally terrified down to his feet to see this drooling behemoth. I guess this is his first time seeing an actual monster, so it is pretty normal if he is feeling terrified about it. But he somehow manages to force his terrified face to make a crooked smile, and promptly greets the giant with all of due respect, telling him to come inside. But the lady is petrified at her place, while making sure that a bug or stinky fly does not enter her by putting a hand on her gaping mouth. But suddenly, the troll's face unexpectedly turns into one of disappointment, and his drool also comes to a halt. The reason for his huge disappointment becomes clear when he marches into the hotel after learning that these humans are just waiters. He frustratingly mentions that if it had not been for our boy's greetings, he had almost thought that humans are available for serving here. Zio Lai is just as terrified as usual, and the boy is too after this encounter, but he had expected this thriller game to be challenging, and it is not as great a shock to him that things have started to take a turn for the worse. The giant troll just sits on the table frustratingly like a stubborn toddler, and the bench under his weight starts to sag downwards. The duo is thoroughly creeped out once again, especially the boy. He is thanking his lucky stars that the bench did not break. Otherwise, he does not know what would have happened to him. The troll immediately pulls out two gold coins and sternly demands the waiters to get him a bottle of hot water along with bowls and chopsticks. Lai Yu promptly forces himself to bow in respect before responding with a crisp yes sir. While the boy is going forward to bring the order, he could not help but steal a glance at those gold coins. We also see this weird kettle on the stove, emitting a sad aura. Its mouth and eye sockets are brutally stitched together, probably to ensure that it does not spill any tea. Not only the kettle, but it seems that all of the tableware is downright weird and creepy. Just as the lady decides to help the boy, he immediately stops her from grabbing the kettle. He then grabs it himself, and that is when he mentions that the teapot is heavy, and neither of them can afford to make any mistake that might potentially end up offending their guests. So it is only better if he does the lifting. Just as the kettle is lifted off the stove, its eyes start to creak open, and it does not take long for it to burst into tears of sorrow and pain. It begs to be killed. It is hot, it is painful, and the suffering is just too much to bear. Heck, this is probably why her eyes and mouth were stitched brutally. Not gonna lie this shit is getting dark and it has started to give me creeps. Anyway back to the story. And Sayo Lai is just bamboozled to find out that this kettle is a living being. Whistling Wilbur starts to go absolutely bananas, dissipating hot steam from every possible cavity, which causes Lai Yu to lose his grip before the burning steam could turn his hand into a roasted potato. But as soon as Whistling Wilbur slips out of his hand, it starts to fall down and inevitably crashes onto the ground, turning into a hundred pieces before the boiling water inside leaks out. They both watch the kettle on the ground, as if they are watching a cockroach doing backflips. The always timid lady throws out an idea to just hide the teapot before anyone finds the mess they have made, but the boy remains silent because he knows they are not getting off the hook that easily. Also, there is a nagging question in his mind as to why she did not try to clear her name when he called her Zio Lai. But then he snaps back to the present moment and, while scratching his head, he mentions to her that that would not work. That is when the baldy oldster arrives on the scene, making sure to clear his throat before speaking. After getting the duo's attention, he casually mentions to our boy that he is just being way too careless, and reminds him that he has just started working here, and ended up messing on the very first day of his job by breaking the teapot. I had doubts that there is a grin etching on this baldy's face, but when the scene further zoomed onto his face, it was indeed true. The man does not shy away from telling the boy that this teapot is worth 50 coins, and extends his hand like a shameless scammer in hopes for the boy to pay. But the scene takes a wild turn when his hands, those who were requesting a few pennies, turn into sharp claws right away. The old coot looks like a deflated balloon, and his tongue and jaw are dangling in the air like a sack of balls. But before shredding Lai Yu into pieces with these claws, he reminds our boy that he just started working here, so it is only natural he does not have any money to pay. Instead of money, this old coot wants Lai Yu's right hand as compensation for the teapot he broke. Zio Lai on the other hand, just could not bear to watch this scene, and lets out a deafening scream out of her mouth. However, the boy immediately tells this overly eager old scammer to halt, and asks since when, he ever said he could not afford it. Lai Yu wastes no time, requesting from the system to withdraw 50,000 Ming Yuan in copper coins. Sure enough, the system notification pops up mentioning that he has withdrawn 50,000 Ming Yuan and also mentions the remaining balance, which I am not going to narrate because this guy has his bank balance in a whopping 30 digits. After the withdrawal, an arcane red energy envelops our guy just as the system rewards him with the money he just requested. 
I am not going to lie. This particular man who sounds really interesting, and the power system our main character has awakened is quite intriguing to say the least. I am really eager to learn more about how my man is going to interact in this world with his practically unlimited amount of money, and what issues it's going to raise for him in the future. If you guys are just as curious, please stay tuned for the coming episode. Until next time.